John Lusk here of Lusk Archery Adventures, series testing, successful hunting. Today I'm going to be doing a retest of a head I did a couple years ago, and I've gotten so many requests to retest it, and I've updated my, uh, my broadhead test process, so I'm going to be testing the Mega Meat. Okay, that's a cool name, Mega Meat, and a really intriguing broadhead, super big cut, Rear deploying, a lot to like about this head, and I've had friends that have used it and really sworn by it, so I'm eager to put it to the test and see how it stacks up to other broadheads with my protocol. So for this test, I'm going to be using my process for 2023 for a detailed description of all of those tests and why I do them and the thought behind them. Please check out this video that I put out earlier this year called 2023 Broadhead Test Process, and it'll explain it. As well, you can read uh, in the description right below the video about each of the test scores that it gets, how it scores in each of the tests that I that I do, so you can get a detailed analysis of that. And I'm going to be using my Bowtech CP28, set at 72 pounds, 27 inch draw. I'm using Bishop FOC King Arrows for most of the shooting, but then I'm using the Bishop FAD FAD Eliminators for really hard impact shots. Okay, let's zoom on in here and go through some of the design features and specifications and then put this Mega Meat to the test. Here's a good look at the 100 grain Mega Meat. And here's a few things I want to point out just right off the bat is it's really uh, tight and has a very low profile in flight, which is nice for such a big cutting broadhead. And they also come with this ballistic match tip that flies just like the broadhead. That's how it's designed. And so you can practice with this and know that the broadhead is gonna fly similarly. Um, as for the materials, uh, we've got a stainless steel ferrule, and then the blades are, uh, are also a steel point 032 inches thick. Now I also wanna note in the ferrule that the, uh, the three edges of this ferrule, it's a really nice tip here, this chisel tip. The three edges are in between each of the main cutting blades. So it actually has like six cutting surfaces, has the three big blades, and then these three little edges in between. And that's just gonna open up a really nice wound channel. Some, most actually broadheads have the chisel tip line up with those blades and that aids in penetration, but this is gonna aid in just cutting more stuff, which is why you get the mega meat in the first place, right? So the blades are held in place by this, um, this base here. They clip into this base, and that base is replaceable. And they really snap in. See, here's like the slip cam. It slides like that. But they snap in really securely. Let me see if I can get it here. You can hear it. Yeah, so you know it's in place there when it just pops in and you know if it comes out. And I really like that, holds them very securely, even out of a crossbow. And then when they're in their fully open position, and it's the impact right there on these this blades that causes them to pop out and slide back. You can see in the open position there, they have a whopping big cut. So two inch cutting diameter with three blades, plus these little three gives it a, a total cut of 3.45 inches. That's a lot of stuff being cut, okay? Has a nice short profile here to uh, to the steel ferrule. I would imagine the ferrule is gonna be pretty durable. I imagine these, uh, these clips are gonna hold them well, hold the blades well, even in high speed. I do wonder about the durability of these blades, okay? They're, they're pretty, uh, slide pretty freely in there. They're quite vented. Um, they're kind of standard diameter, or standard cut, you know, our standard uh, width here of 0.032 inches, but with a relatively uh, thin design and all that venting and them being so long, I imagine that's gonna be a weak point to the head, but we'll have to test it and see. It took 150 grams of force to cut through the wire, which is a 10 on a 10 point scale. It penetrated six and a half inches. 
And here you can see the entrance hole, which is just about its full cutting diameter. They, these heads really do open well on impact. But on the negative side, all three blades bent back quite a bit. And that's pretty rare that uh, blades bend on this penetration test one. It took an additional 25 grams of force to cut through the wire, which is a 9.5 on a 10 point scale. It penetrated through 49 layers. Here it is after one shot into the MDF, and this was a new broadhead. I didn't use the one that had previously bent on penetration test one. I normally just use the same head all the way through, but since that was so bent, I started with a new head, and this is what happened just after one shot through the MDF. It, you know, normally I do three shots, but I stopped after one because it was just so jacked up. So it's not gonna go on to the steel plate round. So here it is after impacting the concrete. Now, as you saw, the blades got considerably bent on the MDF, and so they didn't make it to the steel plate round and even lost one of these blades. I used a pair of pliers to bend this blade back so I, I could shoot it into the, the cinder block because I wanted to see how the ferrule would hold up. And man, the ferrule held up really well into the cinder block. The blades are just uh, pretty weak because they're so long and they're so uh, narrow and vented, but the, uh, the ferrule did very well. Okay, so what'd you think of the Mega Meat? Man, a lot of cool features about this broadhead, right? I like the flight. I love the cut size. I love the rear deploying uh, blades and the way they open up to their full cut on impact. I really like that. Love the durability of the ferrule. That held up really well. But man, the blades are weak. <laughs> I just wish they had stronger blades. I know in many situations, you know, you, you can put it into an animal and it's going to do just fine. I'd say in most situations, it's going to do that but man uh they're just a bit weak so uh you know how important that is to you that's up to you to determine but when they bend so badly even in penetration test one i, I it's rare that i see a broadhead get bent or damaged in that test um and then in the mdf they just got all mangled so you know there's definitely drawbacks some people say oh it doesn't matter it's one and done and and i hear you you know it's it's not just about being able to read use the broadhead but if it's one and done a quarter of the way through an animal that's a problem okay it's when does the done take place if it if it hits a rib or you know hits a, a bone and an angle or something like that and loses a couple blades or has some you know severely broken or bent back then man you're not getting the big cutting diameter that you were really hoping for but if you hit it in the right spot, man, you're going to really make a huge hole and put them down fast. So up to you to determine whether that's a, a reasonable risk to take. But check out the score sheet, see how it performed in the areas that matter to you the most, and see if this might be a good fit for you. Mm -hmm.